How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to Emerald City Hockey post game live. Back to this, RJ. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, we kind of figured this sort of thing was coming with the Kraken going out on the road, with the kids being sent back down against some teams that are a little better than the teams the Kraken had played against recently. The Stars are a very good team. They just clinched winning the Central Division with the win today. You know, they're a good hockey team, but I think, you know, the Kraken should be happy enough with their effort. They didn't roll over. And, you know, if you give a bad effort against this Stars team, they will beat you a lot worse than three to one. That's true. Like for whatever reason, right? The Kraken match up well with the Dallas Stars. They always give us pretty entertaining hockey games. This one actually kind of more so on the boring side for this matchup, I feel like. Um, I might push back a little bit later on, RJ, with with some of how happy the Kraken should be after this. But yes, I agree. The the effort level was there for this game. I mean, the Kraken were in it kind of from the beginning. They were trying, they were pushing, they were trying to get something going offensively. They just weren't quite able to we'll get into all of that of course yeah. later on in the post game right now got to thank our wonderful sponsor flat stick pub for sponsoring the post game live just like they have all year long and i mean yeah it's it's been fantastic having them on board for this i know we've been talking a lot about the watch parties recently but just how great it was to have them as a dedicated sponsor for this post game live it was really really cool to have um like a new a new uh well a new sponsor but i was gonna say a new like face in the room kind of thing for this season as we come yeah to definitely close. i mean you know and they they had heard of us they reached out to us and they wanted to be part of this great kraken community that we have and, and they were they wanted to be on board and so they were with us for this whole season and uh you know through the wins through the losses through everything you know they've supported us every step of the way so we really do appreciate that definitely definitely uh starting things off in the comment section b at this point as long as they're not shut out i can live with it to be honest yeah, I mean, they, they barely weren't shut out. <laughs> yep. I mean, hey, you know what? I, I'm glad they finally broke this streak. I think I texted you about it during the game. But mm -hmm. yeah, that was their first goal against the top 10 team in the NHL in uh, since March 5th. So over a month there. I mean, they'd only, to be fair, they'd only played, I think this was their third game against top 10 teams because the yeah. schedule had been pretty easy. But they got shut out by Winnipeg. They got shut out by Dallas. But they didn't get shut out again by Dallas. So that's yes. something. That is true. They were they were able to get on the board. Yamamoto getting one too. I mean, that's exciting uh, as well. I know a lot of fans um, have been wanting him back in the lineup, and so for him to be out there and get one was was a big deal for a lot of people. You can tell know. how happy he was looking yeah, at that he, celebration. He was thrilled. He was very he was very happy, and he should be. You know why, RJ? Because he went to the net, and good things happened. Right, like it's that's true. what this team needs to do. Did the, I'm just forget it. I was gonna save it a little while, let people trickle in and, and all that stuff, but I'm just going there. Um, the reason I don't think the Kraken should be happy with this one, RJ, is uh because this game demonstrated definitively how bad they need Shane Wright in the lineup because he and I guess Yamamoto, only two guys capable of going to the middle of the net, going to the front of the net, going to the slot, going to the interior, whatever you want to call it. That's it. That's that's it. Like, look how bad the offense was. They couldn't get anything going. They couldn't generate anything. They couldn't make any chance look dangerous because just nobody was there the entire game. Well, I'll give you that overall they didn't go to the net enough. I mean, we've talked about this for months, and I'm, I'm with you. That remains a problem. But I, I think in the third period push, they were moving the puck around well enough. I mean, they hit, what, three, four posts? I thought those were quality chances they were able to generate, and they were using speed to do it. And I know that's not the way that you kind of manufacture those dirty goals, but to me, that against a Stars team where it is really tough to get inside, it is very, mm -hmm. very difficult. Like, the Stars make it hard. I, given the lack of talent, really the talent imbalance, I was okay with kind of what they were able to generate generally in this one. And, and that's the other thing I point to is the talent imbalance still with Shane Wright gone. Like it's just become clear. Like you look at that stat about the top 10 teams, this team does not have enough finishing talent, like not anywhere close. And so I think that was just kind of built into my expectations, I guess. And the fact they were able to keep it close the other way is why I you know, feel okay with it. They do that all year, though, right? Like the defense, the goaltending has been good all year. I, I don't know. I like all I'm, I'm asking fine with for that. them. I know from this point, it's just effort that the effort is there that they right, don't give the up. Effort, right. And the effort was there. But at some point, if this team wants to win, if they want to win next year, the effort they don't want to win right now. I know. Well, they, they do. The players do. They absolutely. Yeah, but do, my right? my point is the regulation loss helps them. So that's yes, why I'm not yes. you beat up but, about it. You know, right, it's fine. But, but, but we're at the time of year where everybody, right? Every question we get, RJ, is about next season. 
right? And next yeah. season, the team has to play differently. Fundamentally, well, right? for sure. You just proved you have to play differently. And it doesn't seem to be sinking into these guys at all. And that's my concern. That's what I'm not happy with. We've talked about it with the systems, though, how you know, it's re you can't really take anything from right now and have it move forward into next season and training camp. It's going to be a clean slate anyway. So I just want to see if the guys care and that they're trying. I don't know. I, I think Matty Beneers could start getting some in-game reps at going to the uh, Yeah, Matt, Matty is one right? that like, I would like to see more from. That's for sure. There is some stuff they could be doing while they're getting meaningful uh, action here. Uh, Nicole with the eh. That's pretty much how I felt through the first two periods of this one. I'm not going to lie. It was pretty like, eh. Um, yeah. B, also, I just love having a delayed puck drop and still missing the first eight minutes of the game because ESPN somehow doesn't understand that an NHL game takes longer than two and a half hours. When will they ever learn, RJ? I, I don't know. I, I As soon as I remembered this morning that it was another ESPN game, that was that was my first eh of the day. Yeah, that's I, true. I was not looking forward to that. And hey, they, they didn't disappoint. Well, I guess they did disappoint, but predictably, you know, as far as how bad the broadcast was. Yeah. Uh, I know it's uh, one day. I mean, what we, we don't all have ESPN news just at the ready to, to, to watch the first eight minutes of a game. <laughs> That's on us. Really. If you think about it, um, Nicole, I really want a reliable power play next year. Right. I mean, like that's the kind of stuff, like they could be working on this stuff while they have time, um, and, and trying to lay some sort of foundation for next season. So you're not having to start everything off completely cold. I don't know. I mean, we got called out too, like AJ on the broadcast calling us out for not using the bumper spot, trying yep. to make it sound a little bit better. Like the Kraken are trying to do things differently. And I was just like, no, you can just, you can just say we're just bad at it. It's all right. Yeah. She was spot on there. I mean, it, it doesn't take too long of looking at this team to realize the problems on the power play. But again, as far as moving things forward to next season, I'm not even convinced that you're going to have the same guy running it. So, yeah, well, you know, how much practice can you really get there? In that case, it's that guy should be trying to save his job by yeah. trying to do something different. Right. Uh, Lindsay, the tank rolls on Hong Kong. That it is that it is. And Maddie asking, what's our likelihood of getting Celebrini cracking right now? Occupying on Tankathon uh, pick nine RJ, which put our odds at first overall at 5%. So 5%, you know, that's hey, that's something. You ever roll a nat 20 on a D20? It happens. I have. It's a great it feeling. Yeah, that's what it would take to get Macklin Celebrini. Not like yeah, and but you know possible. They're yeah, but are they're also within range of uh Calgary, I think, now moving ahead of them, which we thought yeah. didn't have much of a chance. But one more win and Calgary moves ahead of Seattle. So that would bump it up to six percent. Yeah, thank you, Devin Cooley. Uh, <laughs> I feel like this is a win of a game. Played tight and well against a much better team. Didn't get shut out, and our draft position gets solidified. I'd love if this is how the rest of the games go. Yeah, I mean, it, it, that's certainly what you were arguing earlier on. Yeah. Like I said, there's a couple things I want to see just for next season. Um, I think you can go ahead and get started on them now. Like I mentioned, Maddie Benier is working on some of that stuff. Um, but but for the most part, yeah, I'm there, right? All along, we've just wanted effort from this team. That's what got us through year one. Uh, it's what got us through year two. It's what maybe didn't get us through year three. Uh, so, I'm yeah, the effort is the most important part. Yeah. Um, Draber, thoughts on how Justin Beneers played and then Nicole Andre McCann is my favorite player. How incredible was that, RJ? <laughs> that whole sequence. That that was pretty great. I mean, ESPN always finds a way to outdo themselves, I think, every every one of these broadcasts. And yeah, we, we all had a, some fun with that. Um, oh, what was the other one that I I don't remember what the other I mean, one that I, I could... liked the most was? They were all they were all pretty good. Like, let me let me pull it up here. Uh, just to go over them. But yes, Justin Beneers, Maddie Eberly, Jordan Burakovsky, Andre McCann, and Jared Evans. Jared Evans is pretty good. Yeah, that Jared Evans was my favorite. I mean, that one sounds pretty believable. Anybody it's got a nice ring worked, to it. Anybody who's worked in an office environment has worked with Jared Evans. <laughs> like, that's the <laughs> yeah, most that's pencil it. pusher name I've ever mm -hmm. heard. Yep. No offense to any Jared Evans out there, but I also guarantee you work at an insurance company. Um, yeah, and, and Lindsay adding the Coachella Thunderbirds. Yeah, Coachella Valley yes. Thunderbirds. Mm -hmm. Notice that That's, one too. Yep, yep. Good stuff. Good stuff. They're they're only the worldwide leader in sports, RJ. What should again? What, what, what are we supposed to expect? Um, Cracklin Celebrini, here we come. Superfly, only three games to go. Agree with Dylan. That was some ugly hockey. 
So it certainly wasn't great. And then this one here from Lindsay, which I didn't know we were talking about on on here uh, yet, RJ. But congrats on getting engaged, RJ. Thank you, Dylan. Yeah, and thank you, Lindsay, uh, for the chat there. Yeah, I did do a, a social media post on this on my personal Instagram, and I think there's a few people in chat who who follow it. So uh, thank you, everybody. I uh, appreciate it. Yep. Uh, good stuff there. Uh, Edward, screw matinee games. All my homies may hate matinee games. Don't look at tomorrow, Edward. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. Hey, well, does that even get, that's just a pure morning game. That's I was 10 just going to say. Yeah, I was going to say. That's game. a morning game for us. So that's a, that's a morning game out here on the West Coast. But <laughs> it's pretty good. Um, Maddie, what jersey will the Salt Lake Coyotes be handing out at the draft? Feels like a quick turnaround for branding. I mean, it sounds like based on the the new information we have today, like the the idea of the coyote stays with the current owner, not the future owners. So I think we're heading towards like a probably Utah hockey team setup. Yeah, I, that's what it seems like. I, and as for a jersey, there's no way they'll have final jerseys out then by the draft, I would yep. think. So, um, I mean, if you really hurry, maybe I mean, that'd be a great time to unveil it. But I don't think they can get that done in time. No, the amount of checks. I mean, just the copywriting and everything that they have to go through. It might by, be one of those standard NHL game. jerseys, like a yeah, black, you I'm know, black and going silver. To be, I'm thinking they're going to be NHL jerseys. Agreed. So that's not going to be not going to be too fun. And B saying, I hadn't even thought of that. Maybe they pull a temporary PWHL and have a placeholder jersey just for the draft, then real ones to start next season. I I don't know that they're going to have jerseys and, and a team name and branding and all of that ready for next season. Like I it think it does they're take need a little a while. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's see. Superfly going forward. Beneers, Evans, and Wright are the guys to start building around with veteran guys like Dunn, Bjorkstrand, and McCann rounding rounding out the core. Um, I agree with that. I think that, and I think that this season kind of made that clear, right? Like that is the direction the Cracker are going, and it seems like the front office anyway is certainly thinking along those lines, just given the moves that they've made um, the last couple weeks or so. Right. That, that is the future of those guys. And then also you, know, you do have the cap space for one more big addition to that core. And we'll see if they bring someone in the off season that fits that bill. Yep. Um, let's see. Uh, Ricky Spanish, the crack need to keep drafting and developing sign a center or two this off season. Not very deep at that position. I mean, Shane Wright's going to come in at, last game. We were talking about Jared McCann being their fourth line center. They were too deep, but now, now they're not deep enough RJ with one move. Yeah, I mean, it, it's true. You take that away, and and what are you looking at lineup-wise? But with right full-time Beneers and then Yanni Gord as a third-line center, that should be enough. It's just a matter of, you know, do you want to move Gord for some more help, and then do you have to replace him? Yeah. Um, Edward, this broadcasting team really puts the eh in Espen. <laughs> I That's love good. It. Um, agenda of the game was boring. It was boring. Uh, Rayanne, going to paint the ice. Any suggestions? Uh, go to like right, right at the top of the crease and just put Shane Wright was here. <laughs> That's a good one, Dylan. I like that. Yeah, I, I need some more time to think of good suggestions. But I mean, yeah, if anyone has something to put in chat, I'm sure. That's I always just trust the community. They think about way better stuff than we can come up with always. That's true. Just find any place on the ice and just draw like an outline and just put like that's where uh, Tanev went down during a breakaway. You could do that, too. Oof. <laughs> Fits anywhere. Don't um, do that in the Burakovsky corner where you got yeah, don't, don't do that. <laughs> no, no, not that one. Um, Light, I actually really like the crack and removing the bumper. It's been the reason any of our recent power plays that converted have worked. Two net front guys helps generate chances. Um yeah, I mean, it's just that they don't always remove the bumper. Like, it's just sometimes the bumper guy drifts down low and, and kind of does that on their own. Right. And, well, I mean, that's the thing. If you're if you're not going to use the bumper at all, you might as well yeah. reconfigure. And so that's good. But I think there can be a lot of value to having a bumper and using him. But that's just not something the Kraken seem interested in. No. And I mean, when we look at other teams uh, that utilize the bumper well against the Kraken, right, the, looking at those examples, um, a lot of it are like give and go plays, right, where mm -hmm. there's then player movement on the power play, which is just something that seems like a non-starter for this team, right? The idea of that level of player movement that you could do a give and go handoff with the guy in the middle is just like that's. I, I can't even imagine a scenario where this team would have been in a position to do that in the first place. 
No, it's just not something they even look at. I mean, heck, I don't see why you can't do just that high, low, high play more often where you kind of have the guy coming in on the left or right flank. You send it to the the guy net front, right, who's kind of at the side of the net, a little below the mm-hmm. goal line, and then just right back to the bumper slot right there for the one-timer. Like, that's a really simple, effective play that I just haven't seen the Kraken try very often. I We just watched Joe Pavelski in this game. The Sharks ran that play with him a ton when they were there. And, and it doesn't take necessarily someone special like him to pull it off. It's just, it's simple. All you need to do is just have the timing right. Yep, definitely. Um, Edward, so you're t- telling me there's a chance. There is. There is. I don't think the Kraken are getting out of a spot to uh, not have to worry about having odds at first overall. Um, and Lindsay pointing out, Kraken have no tiebreakers, so if the Red Hot Coyotes and Flames get to 79 points and we lose out, we could be at, at the sixth spot, RJ. That would bump our odds all the way up to 7.5%. That's true. I mean, that would be pretty awesome. Because even if you know San Jose wins the lottery, Chicago at number two, if there's no movement, the sixth pick? That's good. Gets into that top yeah. seven range. Like I said, I've got like seven guys that I think are the, are in a tier above the rest. So um, I think we get them to seven, but still, that's actually, I guess, Ottawa. I don't know. Can Ottawa still pass them? No, I don't think so. No, probably not. No, they can. They can get they to can. Yeah, they can. They'd have to win out. So I don't know. But if there's seven guys, get to the seven spot. Yeah. Yeah. Just get into the seven. We're good. Um, Yes, all the all the talks about uh, the, the Coachella Valley Thunderbirds. Um, let's see, uh, Olivia. No, Yamamoto probably isn't staying, but seeing him play again and prevent the shutout was nice. Um, it was, and like I said, he he was before Shane Wright kind of came up earlier this year. RJ, we talked about like Yamamoto was the only guy who would go to those areas of the net, right? Like he's the only guy in this game to really just crash the net again box somebody out like this is where i don't buy the excuse of maddie Beneers needs to add more weight because if because if yamamoto can box out a dallas stars defenseman to have the inside position and then tip a puck home literally at the top of the crease then there's just no excuse for any other player in the nhl not to do so yeah he's the smallest guy out there and he's capable of doing it on the other end for dallas you see logan stankoven able to get to those areas as well i what is is the problem just maddie's too tall the center of gravity is too high yeah, I mean, get lower. It's it's all about learning how to use your leverage. We've seen some taller guys understand how to use their leverage. Um, guys over six feet. So it's it's a which Maddie is on paper. Um, <laughs> we, there's there's plenty of you know there's plenty of ways of doing it of understanding the body position and understanding how to leverage somebody else because it's not even always about lowering your center of gravity. It's sometimes just about leveraging their own weight or size against them. And, and you can do plenty of that, too. And so um, it's just something I want to see more guys on this team take advantage of. Because, like I said, anybody can. Yeah. Um, let's see. ESPN never misses an opportunity to miss an opportunity. <laughs> That's great. That's You're going to steal that line, I think. Yes. Oh, man. That is really, really good. Yeah, I, I'm definitely going to I'm definitely going to take that. Um, like the other thing I think was much more encouraging was how well Seattle played defensively. They really did a good job of preventing anything from going um, by a very fast stars team. That is true. I mean, the stars weren't able to kind of use their speed at all in this one. No, they weren't. And they can be a very dangerous team. I think it's easy to forget, given the last two games the Kraken played against them. They've limited to three goals apiece in those games. Uh, But if you're not on them all the time, they can make you pay. And you look at the goals against, too. I mean, that first one was defended, I thought, pretty darn well. That's just an elite tip um, from Craig Smith there. Like, I don't don't know how you defend that. Like, if, if you can make that play... Good luck to you. You got a goal. Um, and then, you know, the, the third goal, I mean, I, I, I don't know what you saw there. To me, it looked like Grubauer slipped a little bit and just kind of as he was going for the post coming across and, you know, just went down awkwardly. I, I saw think? like one of the most embarrassing sequences from this team all season long because you have multiple defensemen pulled out of position. You have forwards down low trying to help but getting lost. You have Yanni Gord as the only guy net front and immediately you see his reaction to how that whole situation develops where he just throws his arms up and looks at everybody else on the team like what was where were any of you? And then on top of it, you have Grubauer kind of, yeah, rushing across, maybe maybe stumbling a little bit and it just looked... It was bad. 
it was bad. <laughs> I, I, I'm with you on that, but I still feel like, and, and this is not blaming him. I'm just saying it's unlucky. Like that his skate yeah. kind of happened to miss the post. It's just one of those like routine things, you know, but if he stay, if he stays up, like most goalies do most of the time and like he does most of the time, I yeah. think, I think he's still in good position for that one. Agreed. Agreed. But it wasn't just on him either. Like, like it was just, again, it's not a blame thing. It's everybody. just like, I know everyone slips sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, no, like I said, it's you could also not even get to the point where that becomes a thing, right? Like sure. it's just there was a lot of missed opportunities there. Um, from Chuck, uh, maybe a silly question considering the point totals, but with Wright, Morrison, and Winterton on the team, is Dallas a much deeper or more talented team than us? Yes. Um, you know, I think that helps even things out somewhat. I think Shane Wright is that good, or at least he plays in a way that is that important to the Kraken that you could even like you know, put it up there. Um, but Dallas is, I mean, they are one of the deepest, if not the deepest team in the NHL, RJ. Yes. I mean, they're, they're easily a top five team in the league. I mean, they're second in the league in points right now. They are miles better th than where the Kraken are at right now, even with the young guys up. And, and I think these last two games against Dallas, we didn't even really see the best of what they can bring. I think they're capable of even more. Um, but yeah, they're, they're a very, very good hockey team. Yeah. And that doesn't even count. Like that's not even just like offensive depth and scoring. That's also like on the blue line. Right. I think they're deeper than, than the crack in there as well. Um, let's see. I hope our, our uh, defensive work carries over to next season because it's objectively been a highlight for the season from light. I agree with that. I mean, the goaltending has been really solid all, all year long. RJ, the defense has done well when, you know, with what they've needed to do, there was that stretch in time where we talked about the defensive focus issues were a thing. There was a lot of kind of fundamental stuff or even like on that third goal that we were talking about a little while ago like i said both defenders are not where they're supposed to be on that one so there is there are times where it's not always been the greatest but um i i still think as a whole if the kraken can prevent goals the way they have this year next year with a little bit of increased scoring you're going to be right back in that playoff picture Right. I mean, the overall numbers, you look at any of the, the advanced stats or just the regular numbers, they, they say that it's been a good defensive season for the Kraken. And I mean, finishing has been just clearly the problem. Yep. Yep. Uh, you want to you want to read that one, RJ? Yeah, I'll go ahead. Super chat from Kitty B. Kraken. A big super chat. Thank you. As a cat lover myself. Congrats, RJ. Wow. Thank you very much for the super chat. Uh, appreciate it. And yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy right now. Yeah, no, as you should be. We're all happy for you. Um, love some of the names in here for the Utah team, RJ. I really like this one from Jules. Let's get the Utah Raptors. That would be so dope. Um, that would be incredible, especially, I mean, the amount of like uh, dinosaur work that goes on in Utah. I mean, obviously the the famous, infamous Utah Raptor itself, uh, the, the whole species. Uh, so yeah, that would be really, really cool, I think, to kind of talk about something that's uh, native to the area there. Lindsay on board with the Yetis. Uh, Maddie, Utah Golden Plates. <laughs> and then favorite U Utah hockey team. I think if they're going to just be the hockey team for a year, the way we saw Washington have the football team in the NFL, mm -hmm. I think then they go Utah instead of Salt Lake. Yeah, I mean, I mean a, a potentially five word team name, Salt Lake, Salt Lake City, City hockey City team, hockey team, SLCHT. No, <laughs> it's so good, though. <laughs> um superfly the utah owner has already held polls about the team name yeah i mean was it like a specific poll that like they were going to go with the top option because i saw you was just asking for CGI no it's just yeah. asking for feedback yeah. yeah yeah um let's see um rick spanish experience centers go a long way and can help the weight <laughs> of shane and let him flourish um yeah i mean bottom line is i don't care what position they add to the forward group this offseason rj as long as it's somebody who can finish yeah, that's that's you just need finishing. It doesn't matter what position because they have centers, they have wingers, they guys have guys who can play either, like a Jared McCann, where you can slot him wherever. You just need guys who can finish. Definitely. And then uh, Nicole, speaking of tan of that penalty, I'm glad he, you brought that up, Nicole. Yep, yeah, me too. I, I I wanted to talk about this. RJ, what is he thinking there? I don't understand it. Why take that line? Why lock yourself into that line? Especially because you're on the PK. Just go around the net. Just keep possession. Kill time. Bury it in deep. You can go into the corner and just sit on it. Like, I have no... Like, why do you take the one line that's going to result in a five-on-three? I, I only explanation is I think he's just trying to do too much. I mean, given his lack of production, maybe that's what's on his mind is that I can be a difference maker right now and I can go and, at the time, what tie this game mm -hmm. shorthanded. But... 
you got to know who you are. You got to know what you're capable of and what you're not. Um, and Brandon Tanev is a, is a great PK guy and he can rag time and he can bring the puck back. And I just don't know what he's doing, taking that angle. He really wasn't pushed or anything. I mean, his line was taking him into the goalie the whole time. And you have to know the situation too. I mean, at that point, when Tanev takes the penalty, that's when the game was over. That's when yeah. the Kraken no longer had a chance. Handing the Stars a five on three, you have to know they're going to be able to convert on that. They're they're just so good with the extra man or two men. I mean, it basically at, at that point kind of threw away the game, and it's you know not the first time we've seen stuff like this from Brandon Tanev this season. I don't know about you, I've seen enough. I like yeah. I just give that spot to somebody else, whether it's Ty Karche, whether it's Morrison Winterton next season. I. I don't know. I don't need to see any more of this. I'm all right with that. And again, we've talked about he has value potentially out there on the trade market. I would go ahead and I would cash that in if given the opportunity. Um, and, and here's the other thing. And maybe not everybody's going to like this aspect of it. But you've also got a defenseman there on you. Like he is bodying you up. Sell it. Yeah, sell the you contact. Could, you could draw one. If you're gonna if you're gonna run the goalie <laughs> anyway, you might as well sell the contact, and maybe you don't draw the penalty, right? But you you know, like I don't know, like that's that's part of the game too. Um, and he just kind of like did did nothing. He didn't really do anything other than just run into the goalie. <laughs> it was just kind of odd. Uh, Edward, conspiracy theory thought Utah Jazz Lee Kraken Winter Classic jerseys month later owner gets relocated NHL team coincidence. Well, I, I don't think it's a coincidence. We talked about it at the time, right? When the Jazz uh, had the leak for the Kraken jerseys, we both said, you know, there's an owner there on that team that wants to bring the NHL to Salt Lake City. I mean, the, the connection seemed pretty clear even at the time. Of course, that it's happening so soon, I think, surprised a lot of us. But, yeah. you know, it, it makes sense. And I do think that had something to do with it. Yep. Um, Ricky Spanish asking, why didn't the Kraken keep the young guys up for the remainder of the season? Because I was a little confused about this with Lomo and, and Winterton, RJ. Right. So it quickly, in, in Shane Wright's case, that he would have burned the year off of his ELC if he had played a couple more games. So for cap management reasons, you have to send him back down. That was the clear one. But Morrison and Winterton, um, they could have kept them up. I, I, I don't know. I mean, I, maybe they wanted to give him some time to kind of get adjusted to the Firebirds and you know gear up for that playoff run. I understand if you want to do that. Also, because I think the Caxtal wasn't playing them on a game by game basis. He wasn't yeah. putting them in the lineup every night. And this is one of the things that's kind of bugged me over the last you know bit of the season here is that they've seemed like they really want to get those veterans in who are not going to be on this team next season, whether it's Tatar, whether it's Belmar, whether it's Yamamoto. I don't know why they want to keep getting these guys into games, but they they really do. It does seem like they have a, a want to do that. And mm -hmm. I don't know. I would put Morrison and Winterton in over those two. But I think this way they're accomplishing their misguided goal of getting the vets in for some more games and I guess doing right by them. The one thing that I've considered with that and that I can think of is that you're trying to do right by those guys. Right. You're, you're trying to allow them to kind of showcase themselves a little bit at the end of the year, not having finished the year being healthy, scratched as they enter free agency. Right. Which could just maybe leave a sour taste in some general managers. mouths. I don't think any good legitimate general manager would think that way. But, you know, in theory, I could see that being some form of, of the, the thought process there. Um, yeah. The only other thing would be if if, you know, you're worried that Coachella Valley might not clinch the Western Conference. And so you want them there to kind of really just solidify that, get a couple games in with everybody, solidify your lineup there and end the lines. But, you know, we've talked about in the past, the NHL club shouldn't ever really be that worried with the AHL club. You should be worried about the long term future of the NHL club uh, more than anything else. That is what ultimately matters. So I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's there we go. Uh, Superfly, it's been reported they will go with Utah. I also don't think they will go with just Utah hockey team. Other franchises have come up with names pretty quick. Arizona, for example, uh, beforehand as well. I just I don't know. I mean, it's possible that they've the ownership group has done a lot of this work in the background. But like I said, you'd have to you'd have to come up with multiple logo designs, finalize them, get them cleared by the league, copyright trademark. It's a lot that's got to go into it. And 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 this is coming together literally in like three days. Yeah, it's it's so quick. I mean, you look at the Kraken or, or, or the Golden Knights and just this is a process that for most teams, when they have the time, can take years. And so to condense it into months is just very difficult to do. And th there's just so many layers of 
of thought that kind of go into it, um, you know, from, from the start to the finish, when you rush it to the product can be less than great. I'll say that much. Yeah. Yeah. You want, you want to nail it. You want to take your time on, on something like that. And there was, keep in mind, there was elements of the Kraken that did not come together right away. Right. Like we waited until season two for Bowie. Yeah. Was, you know what I mean? Like, like that's, that's partly how this works sometimes. So it's a, it's an interesting one. Uh, Andrew with the super chat. Congrats, RJ. Thank you, Andrew. Appreciate it. Definitely. Um, the AHL playoffs is better because it can be like 20 games of play in games that actually matter from light. <laughs> it's a long playoff bracket. It's really, it is. And, and because of how like weird it is too, because of the travel, right. Them trying to save uh, on travel, um, going all around, it can, it can sometimes be a little wonky and different than what sports fans are used to <laughs> for sure. Yeah. And, and it's something actually Joey was talking about this with like me and a few of other reporters earlier this season about the AHL's playoff format because the Firebirds went through it all of last season. I mean, they went all the way through the bracket to the finals. And he did say it's kind of unfortunate just the way that it works where you can put in so much effort during the regular season and clinch your division and, and you know, secure all this stuff. And you can still be dispatched in a five game series at the start of this thing. Like it's not even a seven game series that you get if you have three bad games early on you're done. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. I mean, there is that downside to it, or I mean, you know, upside if you're a team that's trying to pull an upset, but mm -hmm. uh, still it is, it is very different. Yep. Sam, at least Nicholas Coco fully secured his revenge against his former club today, 947 save percentage over the second round. Let's see how well he and the Pelicans can do in the Liga final. It's such an incredible run. I know we've talked about it, you know, a handful of times him uh, on, on, you know, either post game lives here or on the podcast or uh, on the prospect chats over at pa on Patreon, but like what he's been able to do to go from, you know, kind of losing your job in the one place, losing your job at the world juniors, right? Like that happened too. He lost both jobs getting traded and then just going on the run of a lifetime. Like that's, it's pretty great. Yeah, definitely. And and you can see it in his reaction after that series ended too. I, I tweeted the video. So if, if anyone hasn't seen it, go to our Twitter and just look at the video of Nicholas Coco celebrating and how happy he is. It's just pure joy for him. And, and I, it's just a great moment to be able to beat his former team. And I mean, he, there were some heads scratched, right? When the Kraken took him in the second round. I know yeah. it was kind of a reach. I think some people thought, mm -hmm. but man, he's developing really nicely. Yeah, no, the Kraken, they know what they're doing. And light point now, yeah. Coco had a 1.2 goals against average over the series uh, with the team against the team who didn't think he was good enough. And the fifth game was one on a terrible read by the opposing goalie. Poetic, to put it mildly. Yeah, I can't wait to to you know potentially ask him about it at dev camp. Like, yeah, because I, I be a good one. I remember last dev camp, I, I kind of asked around a little bit, um, uh, didn't do a formal request for an interview, but I kind of heard that the English wasn't quite up to the, you know, comfortable level yet. Totally understandable. The guy's been in yeah. Finland this whole time, but I think I want to try again, this dev camp, see if I can talk to him. That's what translating apps are for RJ. Yeah. In piecemeal it, find somebody. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, uh, crazy how quickly we as a fan base went from can we acqui acquire another Tanev brother to can we trade our Tanev brother? <laughs> that was pretty quick, <laughs> actually. Does, does happen fast. Does happen fast. Um, let's see. Uh, trademark copyright perspective. It's just it's a six to seven month process. There's no way they'll be able to do it from Olivia there. So, yeah, that's yeah, right. That's, actually, I remember even from like trademark us. Emerald City Hockey and our stuff. It, it took months. Yeah. No, it, it does take a, a pretty long time. So um, I, I think that's uh, that's the, the, you know why we're going to have an interesting situation here. Um, maybe they can lease the name Coyotes for a year, RJ. Just license the name for a single season. Keep something. Oh, yeah. And Marulo gets to bring in more money. Awesome. <laughs> he needs it to buy all that desert land, RJ. <laughs> Next red glare. It's okay. You're only an economics major. You wouldn't understand business. Um... <laughs> we made fun of the business majors. 
every day. <laughs> yep, I'm sure you did. Uh, Elizabeth, completely hockey unrelated, but Dylan, you have to drop your hair routine. I have curly hair as well, but yours is like next level. A Patreon special during the off season, maybe. Yeah, I mean, this was actually a trim to put in some layering earlier and then just wash, condition, scrunch it up, let it go. I'm trying. I'm trying. Um, there's not much to it. I'm definitely the wrong person to ask. Uh, yeah, Maddie, like, Maddie agreeing. Always admire Dylan's hair when it's down. Them curls. Jessica yeah. appreciating the curly flow. Jessica's got some nice curly flow herself, though. That is true. That is very, very true. Um, Light, it's worth noting that according to Alan Walsh, the reason the ball started to roll to move was because of the NHLPA head calling out the Oats owners at the All-Star game. Yeah, that I, the whole situation, like it's all slowly starting to come out. Like I can't wait, probably maybe not the next red glare, but the following one, like at some point, RJ, all the dirt's going to be out in the open and we're going to really understand what caused this to all happen. And it's going to be pretty nuts because I was surprised at how like on board the board of governors is with all this, right? Like they're, they're basically saying we're going to take away a franchise from one of us. And they're just like on board with that. Like that normally is not a quick and easy process. No, I think things just had to get to a certain point where it was so bad. And I, I think we reached that point. The, the thing that really did it for me recently was the hotels. Yes. You know, the, where, where Frank Saravalli reported that earlier in the season, the Coyotes weren't paying their hotel bills. And so hotels around the NHL banded together to demand the Coyotes pay for their hotel stays up front with a certified check. Like that's the kind of thing that makes the whole league look bad. Mm -hmm. And if you're another owner, you know, that you look at that, you think, okay, we got to get somebody in here. That's just making all of us look bad. Yeah, although they keep Gary Bettman. <laughs> you think the logic would apply? There? Yeah, yeah, you must have something on all of them. I don't. At this point, I don't know. <laughs> I know, I know. Um, Maddie, my guess is a lot of the background legwork has been completed for Utah. I doubt we'll get logos and colors by the draft, but maybe a name. I could see something being thrown together by October. I could see something. I could see them announcing what the name maybe will be come the start of the season but again the branding will then probably trickle out over the course of the year and then we won't see anything on jerseys until the draft uh in 2025 that would be my yeah. best guess for a timeline i could see that you could pick out a name in time but every anything yeah. else yeah because i mean that's when did we first when did we first get a jersey reveal for the kraken rj like when was their like logo and jersey unveiled oh i should i should have that memorized um in the timeline because i remember because we got the name kraken before we got a logo right or was that all that lie wiki presser while they were still you know like with all the scaffolding and the uh the the rebar and stuff behind him no because that well that was announcing the team name right then that and they didn't do a logo at that point right so no they did have they did have a logo the name yeah, and logo what, were unveiled at the same thing. time yeah yeah but that was still what a year ish before the team was going to play. Uh, not quite a year, or maybe it was, was it March it was before I moved up to Seattle. Actually, it was about a year. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I thought I'm trying to like scroll through my, my photos to see everything, but <laughs> well, I'll let you do that. Um, burnt Krem saying trademarks are taking a year plus right now. I know from firsthand experience in waiting, um, and then Jules, for trademark standpoint, Utah will need to use an accurate feathered raptor and not to be confused with the Toronto Raptors. I just want a hockey dinosaur. I'm with you, Jules. I want a hockey dinosaur too. Um, and, and I'm with you, right? Raptors have feathers. Like that is the way they, that's, that's what they are. They are not Jurassic Park Raptors. They are <laughs> Raptor Raptors. Like yeah. current right, day Dylan, Raptors. It was, it, yeah. it was uh, July, 2020. So it was about a year from the expansion draft. Yeah. So like that was the timeline for them. And that was still what three years or two years ish after they like it was going to happen, kind of. Yeah. It was they announced it together happen. To happen. Yeah. It was still a ways after. Yeah. Yeah. So there we go. Um, idea for next year's April Fool's video Dylan shampoo ad from Edward. <laughs> Could probably make that happen. Go do like a head and like shoulders that. thing. Um, Sam, here's a question. If our draft position is unfavorable to get one of those impact players near the top, would you trade one of our two second rounders this year to move up higher? I would. Like you, you've been you putting would? together. Yeah, I would. You've been putting together a pretty good prospect pool. So I, I understand like wanting to have more assets because you still only have three drafts worth of prospects. But the bottom line is, RJ, what this season has proven more so than anything is that this team still needs difference makers. 
right? This is an organization that has proven to be very good at going out and finding value plays, finding depth pieces, but they have not been good at finding difference makers. If they feel like there is a difference maker on the table that it's going to take, you know, moving some extra picks to move up from nine, 10 to get up to six or even seven to draft their guy. I'm on board with that because I think that's ultimately what this team needs and they can figure out, you know, the other stuff later. Yeah, normally I'm against it just from a value standpoint. I usually are giving up extra value to do something like that. But yeah, for this team in this situation, this if everything goes according to plan and goes well, because they're going to try and be competitive next year, this is your last chance at a you know top six or seven pick for a while, or it should be, it better be. So you have to make the most of it. Get somebody who can be a star for you. It's going to be the last piece of that core rebuilding that you're drafting for yourself. So I, I wouldn't mind that if you see someone you like. Yeah, it, it all it all depends on if it's somebody you like and you you really believe in, then I'm I'm okay with going for it. Um, because otherwise, you know, yeah, the, we know this team can find Goyettes, Ferguses, Newmans in the second round. That's 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 great and everything. But again, you're talking about middle six to bottom six players. Team's got too many of them. And they're yep. going to have too many of them for a little while, considering they hit on all those guys all the time in the draft. So <laughs> I, I don't think they're in the they're in a unique spot to do so um let's see the the fact that coyotes didn't pay for hotel bills is insane hotels requiring payment up front was so wild it's, it's very wild um let's see uh and ricky saying the owner didn't pay for anything he wanted someone else to pay for the arena that was always the problem it's true i you're just a terrible owner i will get into it on red glare but i mean there's all the different things also um superfly saying that teams don't yeah. really trade down within the top 10 which is true you almost never see teams trading out of the top 10 so you'd have to put it probably multiple seconds at, at the very least to move up and that's why it doesn't happen yeah i was just gonna say it would take more than just like one additional second but if the kraken are picking ninth or tenth i could see a team moving down from six or seven to that spot for a for more assets. Yeah, you can right? move like up two or three picks. Thing. Yeah. 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 That is something that can happen. Um, if the Kraken, you know, pick what? How how realistic is could they fall? Eleventh? And they yeah, try to 11th. move up the six, that's when you're starting to push it, I think. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Uh, maybe that's when you could move a Tanev or Gord in addition to a second rounder to move up. Oh, I mean, only if the team problem is, is those teams that are in the top six are. or seven wouldn't have use for a tan of record uh, unless Ottawa really wants to try to turn things around and be super competitive next year like that would be your one <laughs> but that's a, again a big reach probably yeah um let's see uh Lindsay, my brain is broken i heard trademark and thought trade mark and i was like who is mark who are we trying to trade for in the off season mark stone of course the yeah. playoff cheat code yeah, exactly. We got it. We're good. Um, let's see. Uh, according to rumors, some of the names for Utah were the Yeti, Blizzard, Pioneers, etc. Um, I mean, it's going to be a little while. And Edward's saying, would the Avs allow the Utah Blizzards? It's too close. I mean, even even Yeti, Dylan, I was going to ask you, because like the Avs, as their alternate, have that foot logo, right? They yeah. have the whole Bigfoot thing. Yeah. I think no, that's too close. It might be. It might be. I don't know. They There's... It's good. There's going to be lots of just stuff thrown around for a little while now. Uh, and, and we're just going to have to wait and see. I will say this. I'm trying to remember how, how, how on it was, were people like guessing the Kraken before it was officially unveiled? I'm trying to remember I mean, that it, whole process. It was talked about a lot. I mean, yeah. there were no leaks or anything, but we really didn't know until they announced it. Cause that's just how this organization rolls. Yeah. But I, I think there, it was definitely talked about. It was the kind of wild card name. Because they yeah. had all the, you know, like sockeyes, emeralds, all those that would have yeah. been kind of more normal. And then I think a, a lot of the reaction when it was announced was like, whoa, they actually did it. Yeah. They actually chose the super fun name. Yeah, that is true. Um, let's see. Uh, according to ESPN, we just might have a mark on our roster. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to go back and check. That is true. Um, <laughs> uh, Jenna, I'm asking chat GPT and says Timberwolves, Rhythm and Snowcats. I like the Timberwolves, but I don't know that you could do it just because the NBA team, um, mm -hmm. the, the Minnesota Timberwolves. But I love the idea of going with like a, a wolf type thing. RJ, I mean, you know me, I, I name in the, the youth teams I coach, the wolf pack and stuff like I just think that that's the way to go. Always. Yeah. 
Although for for that thing, it would be the same as the Raptors, right? Because the NBA yeah. also has a team. So yeah, that's true. That's true. It's cool. It's man. Not, maybe not as specific as Timberwolves. Yeah, but... <laughs> that's true. Uh, let's see some things to report from the AHL last night. Drago looks solid, not stand out, but not an 18 year old liability. Also Newman is legit. He's going to be fun next season. Newman size is instantly notable and he is fast. Um, he is right. Like straight line speed is the one bit of skating that Yanni Newman's got down. It, it <laughs> that tends to be when he has to turn at speed or stop, um, that, or, or make any of those sort of like agile plays, agility plays, um, cutting in and around the net and stuff. Cause like, ultimately that's where you want his size, right? Like we've been talking about with everybody on this team, you want that size to play to the interior or to be able to cut to the net and kind of drive through guys. And right now his skating doesn't allow him to make those kinds of moves. And so that's going to be something he needs to work on long-term. Um, I tried to watch that game and my internet was not having it. I was watching like potato mode. I could not tell who anybody was. I could kind of tell who he was just because he was bigger, but it was just not of quality where I was able to actually like discern anything from his play. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, hopefully your internet uh, hangs in there a little bit better during the playoffs and everything. I, I want to watch yeah. the Firebirds games. Yes, yes, definitely, definitely. Uh, it was yeah. There was uh, there was just other have stuff to go. going on. Yeah. It, well, oh, oh, oh well. <laughs> uh, <laughs> good stuff. Uh, Nicole, the Avs used to have a Yeti mascot? Question mark. No, I don't think they had um, the Yeti mascot, but they used the foot, right? Like, because their mascot's been. Is his name Bernard, the St. Bernard? Bernie. It's Bernie. Bernie yeah. Um, but I don't well, remember. Well, no, they, they did have a Yeti mascot before Bernie. Really? I think I remember that. Yeah. Back in the like back in like their cup run days. Yeah, yeah, like early on. When did when did when did uh Avalanche. Bigfoot Howler standing Howler. More than seven oh, feet that's tall? That's right. Yeah. yeah. Howler. I remember that now. Disappeared in two thousand one. Uh, well, and then they had no mascot until Bernie in 2009. When did the Utah Jazz come in? Is this guy just been playing the absolute longest game possible? Let's see. Let's see. <laughs> the Winter Classic jerseys are just barely scratching the surface. Yeah. Uh, moved to Utah. 1979. All right. Never mind. Yeah. Maybe not. <laughs> never mind. Um, let's see. Uh Jenna came down to crack in her sock eyes. The scuttlebutt was sock eyes. Um, and then Maddie, I remember the announcement of Seattle getting team. People were already all in for Seattle crack. And I was personally on board with the sock eyes. If they can't do Timberwolves, then they can't use Raptors. Yeah. Put out. Yeah. And then, yeah. Wolfpack. I'll, I'll let them use Wolfpack. Yeah, that'd be fine. <laughs> yeah, the NFC you State right. will allow them to use it. Yeah. <laughs> Dylan, do you remember back to when the Kraken announced their name, like what you were rooting for? I, I was on board with Kraken. I was like, too. Why wouldn't I, I think it was number two. I was rooting for Emeralds number one because that would have helped us a lot. I think <laughs> that would have been good, yes. Emerald City hockey already. Yes. <laughs> but other than that, Kraken. Uh, yes. Any Anybody getting lost on Google, it would have really redirected right to us. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> um let's see uh technically we did have a mark once on our team two years ago <laughs> so it's yep. true once upon a time uh yep uh kylie i know it won't happen but i love utah utes uh arizona yotes to utah utes fun to say too that would be interesting if they if they did that um let's see they could buy out the grizzlies from the echl team nice uniforms uh, uniform colors. Oh, I'm gonna have to look that up now. Are they green and? I think. Well, that's the other thing. Like, what's the what's the color scheme? Like, what NHL? What color schemes don't the NHL? You know, doesn't the NHL? Does the have? NHL have? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's hard to pick something totally new for a color scheme. Just yeah, it's it's green and black for the Utah Grizzlies, which I think I don't know, a little too close to Dallas, even though Dallas is going with a different type of green now. Yeah, maybe. Hmm. Because I, I mean, you know, further down, right? Like Maddie saying, I've seen people wanting Utah Stingers because of the bees. Like, you could go in the direction, like we talked about. Like, I, I'm, I'm in favor of just Sting. But mm -hmm. what you're gonna, you're gonna just go be another like black and yellow team in the NHL? Like, the I mean, Bruins what? There's the Penguins. Yeah, there's and and I mean that's two. I think they'd be the third. Yeah, but doesn't that already feel like a little too many? 
It's only like, 32. So. Like there's there's a lot of colors and you just have to pick two of them that haven't already been I mean, picked there's like by 10 else. plus red and blue teams. So just don't go with one of those. Gosh, I, I, I yeah, no, I hate that. Um, Take purple or the jazz. Didn't the jazz use purple for a while? Yeah, back in the day. Um, the Kings have abandoned it. They don't deserve it anymore. Yeah, yeah well, they, they, yeah, they've definitely gotten rid of it. Um, and the Coyotes used it a little purple. bit. I'm, I'm still waiting for the day where a professional sports team mans up and uses pastels as a color scheme. Like, let's go, just <laughs> do it already. We have the technology finally where you could make jerseys with pastel colors. Somebody join me. <laughs> We'll see if I they mean, Lindsay, listen. I don't Utah think unicorns. Like that would work. That would yeah. Work. Oh, that. There you go. Yeah. There we go. Let's go. Utah unicorns pastel color scheme. I'm a thousand percent on board with this. Uh, that's now all I want, and anything else would be a massive disappointment to me. <laughs> I love setting go. myself up for, for disappointment. Clearly. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, Bryce, uh, Zoe mentioned it in Discord, but I'm all for Utah ska. With the jazz, like, kind of. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, that would be fun. You could have like yeah. ska bands in there during the game. That would be that would be a lot of fun and also annoy a lot of people for a reason I still don't understand. Yeah, I, I think be it'd good. be pretty controversial. It Well, yeah, but you know what? Everybody would talk about your new team and it wouldn't mm -hmm. be. Oh, this is the team that like left in the middle of the night and didn't even tell their own players they were leaving. <laughs> yeah. What does the logo look like, Dylan? What's the color scheme? I mean, you'd go, you could go with any color scheme, really, right? Like, go ahead and do like some fun '90s, yeah. Like, throw something together for like the second wave of Scott, and then you could just, um, you could have it be like a horn as the logo, right? Like, get a trumpet on there, like steal some old St. Louis blues like nonsense that they had back in the day, and you could, you could do something like that. There you go. Yeah, I think you kind of have to. I don't know. There's a lot of options. Yeah, Ed like Dylan out. exposing himself as a Scott defender. Yeah, I'll do that all day. <laughs> I thought, I thought we, we've, we've established by now that I love defending losing arguments. <laughs> yes, I, sure thought that was, I thought that was just, we all knew that already. Um, Edward saying, Inter Miami have pink jerseys. Like, I, NHL could have a pink jersey. I'd be on board with that. Like, could just do yeah. it. Just do it. Somebody's got to do Panthers it. Panthers should make a, a pink alternate. They should. Yeah, especially because I don't think Salt Lake City is the team to do it, but Panthers no, should probably, do it. Probably not. <laughs> That's a good point. Um, I really want to crack in third jersey with the ice blue as the main jersey color from Maddie. Um, I want that too. The, like, again, the only concern I could see with that being is that it might look a little weird on broadcasts against the white ice. That's the only concern I think that anybody would have with that. I, I think they had enough of the ice blue on the reverse retros and it didn't look too weird. That's true. That's true um let's see utah feels like it should be a burnt orange and reddish color but maybe that's the geologist in me from maddie no i you're on to something there i think maddie <laughs> and i think that that is something that we could see from them because there's not too many of that and i was also going to say like i haven't seen anybody suggest really any naming um for like the national parks and stuff there right like you could pick yeah, like haven't. a mountain or some sort of like geological um you know, fixture or landmark and make that into the logo and the team name. Right. I mean, you could go something like that and, and you keep almost a little bit of the kind of brown, not quite like the desert colors, but like, you know, for the, the coyotes had, you know, you wouldn't have right. to change up the color scheme a ton. You should have your sister come up with, you know, a, a design, <laughs> you know, she's got great art skills, do a, some kind of geology based concept uh, design or something for a Jersey. Yep. Definitely. She doesn't have anything else going on right now, right? Yeah, no, no, nothing going on at all. Um, Jazz actually wore purple mostly in the 90s. Their current jerseys are insanely ugly from Superfly here. By the way, I like the ska, um, the jazz and ska from Utah. It does, it rhymes, RJ. Gotta do it if it rhymes. It's, it's like <laughs> law. Um, <laughs> That's like law. Uh, Ricky saying jazz have a uniform that looks like Bryce. So there you go. Like like already kind of doing that. I'm okay. assuming you mean like uh, the national park. Yeah, I'm trying to yeah. look it up. 
um let's see uh because i i think that would be good and then olivia kraken third jersey with ice blue as main color and a red glare blackout jersey with just the red eye would be so nice i want a red glare blackout jersey like that should just happen rj that that would be cool i mean i might even want it just a really dark blue like a dark 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 blue yeah. instead of the black and then just have the eye showing but yeah something with the centering the eye would be pretty cool Yep. And B, I'm begging for a Kraken version of the Dallas black and neon green jerseys, but with the ice blue instead of the green bonus points, if the anchor Space Needle logo is on the crest of the jersey, it would look very good. I think that's the only way you could do the anchor logo as the centerpiece of a jersey, as the center crest. Yeah, if you get it to really just pop like that with the colors and everything, I think yeah. it would work better than just if the colors were more normal. Dylan, this is getting me excited. To, I know we've discussed you know, putting out ECH jerseys in the past. It's kind of been forced to be put on the back burner, but it's still on my summer list of things to look at. This is getting me excited for that. Yes. I was going to say, I think it was on your summer list last year too, RJ. Uh, <laughs> it was, it was. <laughs> There's a lot to go on then. Um, let's see. Uh, so I, I like that. Um, like the only reason I'm not a Scott fan is I'm a classical musician and all the, all the most annoying people I've ever played with wouldn't shut up about ska. Uh, sounds like you just need to lighten up light. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> lighten up even light needs to lighten up even more. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Elizabeth, I'd be down for a ska punk theme if, if there has to be ska involved. See, I mean, you could go a lot of directions with it. Uh, Maddie Getting pointed out the Utah, board, Dylan. Yep, the Utah arches, Utah mesas, um, Utah Zions. <laughs> Probably not going to go with that one. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, there's like, a, like there's a lot of good stuff there. I think the arches could work. And then you yeah. could have a your main sponsor be McDonald's. Oh, it, it would, wouldn't it? There you go. <laughs> Just the golden arches as the, the jersey the... sponsor, and then the arches with like the, your yeah. your thing. It'd be great. I mean, you already had a recent expansion team have the golden in the previous. Yeah, you know, Utah yeah. had golden tablets up here. The Utah yeah. golden arches. Yeah, and then you steal the St. Louis arch while you're at it. Just there you like, go. Like the actual arch. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that way, hey, you, you wouldn't take as much time to trademark everything. You just, you know, have McDonald's, you know, pay yeah. you to use it and what, and there you go. Yeah, that's that would be the most NHL thing of all time, RJ. We're just using a different, we're just using a corporate logo sponsor to be our team logo. You know, Bettman would love it. He wouldn't be able to say so, but he would love it. He would think it was great. Uh, the problem is, if we were to have seen that, RJ, it would have been in Arizona. <laughs> That would have been the time. That's true. I would have saved the, it. Yeah. The people involved, that would have been it. <laughs> Jessica, now you're marketing. Yeah, exactly. Oh, that's that's good. Lindsay, I just want the crack and anchor to be on the chest for one of our alternate jerseys. Um yeah. Mm. Yeah. Utah I, flat I just, sticks. I, yeah, there we go. That works. That does work. That yeah. would work um i'd say i'd buy an ech hockey jersey i we've had a lot of interest in the past it is something we're just gonna have to bite the bullet at some point i'm gonna push to myself done. to get that yeah. over the finish line this summer yeah i i think that'll be good um let's see um let's see olivia god now we're really acting like business majors with the corporate suggestions <laughs> so all right we've already we've already got our therapy license here now we're going for mbas exactly yeah <laughs> Hey, I don't like, I don't have to like it. I just have to know that that's the way the world works. Um, <laughs> and on that note, I know really, we'll do a quick last call here. Um, yeah. I mean, it was, there was a game. Just, Dylan. I, there we, was we were a game. About hockey game. It wasn't very time. interesting as, as just about everybody put in chat. It was a boring game. There's a reason we've spent the last 25 minutes talking about um, a different franchise entirely. Um, but I, th I guess at the end of the day, the, the one important thing is, RJ, that the Kraken lost. And um, that's what they need to be doing right now this time of year. Yep. I think it's something we really just need to embrace from here on out this season. There's three games left. Uh, we can think back to the past about that last game against the Jets in year one uh, and the blown lead and securing us Shane Wright and getting to watch him for yep. a long time. So think in that mindset the, as as glenn said i think a few weeks ago you know the losses will come you don't have to root for losses they're gonna come anyway so yeah. let's just have fun with it exactly and hey we don't have to wait too long uh because we're gonna get another game uh tomorrow jessica normally we say good night but see you in the a.m 
That's right. That is see everyone tomorrow morning. I know tomorrow morning. Well, I guess it would be mid game for post game. Oh, that's true. Yeah. But yes, Lindsay, see you in less than 24 hours. I know it's, it's that is definitely the way to do it. And Draybird saying NCAA finals is going on right now. Um, yeah, I actually do want to watch that. So I think we might go ahead and, and close up things here. Go watch the, the finals there between Boston College and Denver. Uh, it should be a good time. And we will see you all tomorrow. And thanks to Flatstick.